This is KGW News at 11. Our top story tonight, swollen rivers and overwhelmed dams lead to flooding in several spots around the state. Some have had to evacuate their homes. Parks are closed and roads blocked by the high water. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Laurel Porter and I'm Dan Haggerty. While some areas are already dealing with some of this high water, others are watching rivers that are still rising. We have live team coverage tonight of the flooding. We're going to start with KGW's Mike Benner, who's live along the Willamette in Wilsonville. Mike. Yeah, hey there, Dan. We're actually at the uh, Boone's Ferry County boat launch in the Wilsonville area. Let me step out of the way here. Take a look at the uh, Willamette River. It is a lot higher than it should be. In fact, that uh, porta potty right there, half of it is submerged in the high water. Same sort of problems down in the Willamette Valley, specifically Salem. The Willamette River there expected to crest just below flood stage on Wednesday. As bad as I've ever seen it down there, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, it's bad. Tyler McClung rides his bike through Salem's Minto Brown Island Park at least five days a week. Monday, though, was different. The water is unbelievably high, unbelievably high. At just about every turn, McClung was riding up on water covered paths. I just tried to come from the other side, thought I could ride through it, and I was like, nope, I'm turning around. Several corners of the park are flooded by the rising Willamette River. Look here, a picnic bench and fishing dock getting swallowed up by the flood waters. Across town at Wallace Marine Park, the closed signs are already up. Nobody's taking any chances here. West Salem Park dealing with minor flooding as well. We're farmers, so it's nice to have some time off. With that time off, Philip Landis is driving around checking out flooding in Marion County. He was shocked by what he saw on Talbot Road South, north of Albany. The rural road was impassable due to high water. I've seen it like this before, but it's definitely you know impressive to see the water moving. And I think I don't remember actually the water moving so swiftly. It's crazy. Back at Minto Brown Island Park in Salem, Tyler McClung wonders if the river levels will continue to rise, yep. ultimately closing that park. If so, McClung will take it in stride. We live in Oregon, so you just, you're just used to the rain, so you just deal with it. All right, back out here live along with the rainfall. Uh, snow melt from the higher elevations is to blame for these uh, flooding concerns. Uh, authorities in the Willamette Valley urging everyone to pay close attention to those road close signs. They're there for a reason. The water is always higher than it actually looks. Back to you. Always a good reminder. Mike Benner live for us tonight. Thank you. We're also keeping a close eye tonight on the Clackamas River. The water is expected to reach minor flood stage near Estacada tomorrow and the Willamette River near Oregon City running fast and furious. You see it here filled with logs and debris. Both rivers rose quickly yesterday with all that rain, but have fortunately started to level off. Lane County also dealing with flooding tonight. The coast fork of the Willamette is spilling out of its banks. Riverstone Mobile Home Park is right next to it. It's a 55 and up neighborhood. People here had to be evacuated last night, along with other folks who live in the 100 year floodplains of the Willamette and Rau Rivers. At 88, I should be worried. My goodness sakes. Yes. Well, we started calling people um, when we realized, you know, just encouraging them to pay attention because we didn't realize how fast it would it would come in, you know, and we, we saw that it was seeping through the fence, you know, over um, coming out of the ditch that's over there. Longtime Cottage Grove residents say they haven't seen flooding like this since 1996. Firefighters had to boat in and save two people and a cat from an RV. Look at that. It was surrounded by water. The Red Cross has set up a shelter at the Cottage Grove Community Center. And a little bit to the east near Oak Ridge, a landslide has closed Highway 58. This is the same area devastated by the snowstorm in February. Poor Oak Ridge. Crews work today to clear the road and hope to have the highway back open sometime tomorrow. The flooding in Lane County is because the Army Corps of Engineers had to release water from its dam system. They say the reservoirs are overwhelmed by the rain. In particular, we're talking about the Dorena Reservoir. If it were to overflow, they say the damage would be much worse than what we're seeing now because the water would be uncontrollable. That's why they're releasing water slowly at this point. With so many areas impacted by the flooding, there is no shortage of photos and video showing water where it shouldn't be. KGW's Lindsay Nadrich pulled a few of these snapshots for us and Plans to share it now, Lindsay. You saw a lot of interesting stuff. Yeah, a lot of these photos are pretty incredible. There are so many paths and parks just covered in water. Wow. Just a little bit wet here. And uh, I think.
think the artificial turf is actually floating. Sean Gettings shot this video of his son and daughter making the best of the flooding at Columbus Park in Lebanon. How is it, guys? Wet. Wet. And they don't care, they, you know, they live in Oregon, they want the rain, so we walked over to the park. The turf looks more like a trampoline. I don't know how much water is underneath it, but enough to get it moving. And some of the play structure was actually starting to move a little bit also. That wasn't the only park flooded. The path at Hebb Park along the Willamette River in West Lynn is covered with water. And check out these photos viewer Benjamin Elliott sent us of the flooding at Alton Baker Park in Eugene. Water is covering stairs, a ramp, even part of the fence. And this sign on the light pole that reads, path may be flooded when river rises, couldn't be more true today. If you have any photos or videos of the flooding in your neighborhood, use the hashtag MyKGW on any social media or shoot us a message on Facebook. Back to you. Lindsay, thank you so much. A lot of people with a lot of footage out there. Chief Meteorologist Matt Safino joining us now. Is the worst of this rain behind us, Matt? It is very much so, Dan. Uh, we still have rain in the forecast, but not the heavy, widespread, long-lasting soaking rains that we saw over the weekend and even this morning. And in fact, some good news, the flood uh, advisory for the South Coast has been allowed to expire. There are still some flood warnings out for individual rivers. That's for the Rogue River near Agnes. That's the Coquille River. A couple more up north, like the Pudding River, which is a very slow responding river. Once it floods, it takes a long, long time for that one to mellow out. This uh, advisory and watch actually will be allowed to expire in the morning and then this one on Thursday morning. So again, things are beginning to drop off just a bit, as have the showers. Now you can see there's a few rolling into the coast right now. There is an organized system here that will bring us showers. Oh, probably about 4 or 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. for the valley sooner at the coast. But again, we're talking scattered showers, not the kind of rain that's going to make the rivers rise and become problematic one more time. So rivers begin to recede even tonight, certainly again tomorrow. Showers tomorrow, early in the morning, then later in the afternoon, and then some steady rain coming in again Wednesday night. But again, even with that, shouldn't be enough to cause any major, major aggravation of the rivers and the snow level will be dropping as well and that will help to keep the snow in the mountains not adding snow melt to the rivers too back to you that's encouraging news thank you matt now we want to get you caught up on the other news making headlines tonight a judge has denied a request to move jeremy christian's trial out of multnomah county christian is accused of stabbing three men on a max train almost two years ago two of them were killed his attorneys argued there was so much negative publicity surrounding Christian, it would be impossible for him to get a fair trial. While a judge agreed there was extensive adverse coverage of his case, she said that was not enough to prove the jury pool would be tainted. Trial is set to begin in June. Police have arrested a man for a murder right in the middle of downtown Portland. They say 38-year-old Daniel Connor assaulted and killed a man. The victim was found on the sidewalk near Alder and Broadway just after midnight. Police have not yet identified the victim. New video shows how neighbors rushed to help during that recent fire in Wilsonville in Villebois. You can see a woman knocking on a door with a fire burning in the background. It happened at an under construction apartment complex in that Villebois community on March 31st. About 20 homes were damaged or destroyed. Amazingly, though, no, nobody was hurt, maybe thanks to people that went door to door. Investigators haven't figured out yet how it started. All this week, KGW and other media outlets all around the state are talking about a difficult subject, suicide. In Oregon, suicide is the second leading cause of death among young people. Tonight, we're hearing about an Oregon high school that lost three students last year. Sprague High School has since worked to get students the help they need through counseling and suicide prevention programs. And there are signs of encouragement all over campus. Dr. David Brown, the longtime choir director at Sprague, lost his son to suicide. He says parents can help identify problems by digging deeper. We have to learn to start asking questions in different ways. Um, Open-ended questions instead of closed-ended questions. Tell me about your English class. And then, you know, let them talk. Then remind your children it will be okay, that they'll get past the pressures of high school. They can sometimes feel insurmountable. Also look for changes in mood or behavior with your children and ask them about it. If you or someone you know needs help, there are resources available, such as the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. There's the number right there on your screen. People are available to talk 24 hours a day, every day. And we'll be sharing all of our stories this week to raise awareness about suicide and suicide prevention on the website. It's breakingthesilenceor.org.
OR.com. Breaking with silence, OR.com. Next, wild horses are at risk in Oregon. We'll show you how a network of trainers is taking them in, hoping to save their lives. Plus, horse racing may be a thing of the past for Portland Meadows, the deal that will likely close down the track.